Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So this from T-Hole Baddick XRP, Central Bank of Sri Lanka's governor recognized and rewarded HMB top achieving customers. And here's what they said, HNB focused on remittances as an engine for development, guys. This recent news coming out of Sri Lanka, underpinning the power of remittances to drive development in the support of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, efforts to optimize inward remittances to Sri Lanka, leading private sector bank HNB PLC, recognized and rewarded their top achieving customers at a special ceremony on the premises. And so just down here, speaking on the occasion, CBSL governor Ajith Nivard Cabral said, we express our gratitude to every Sri Lankan working overseas who is able to send a portion of their hard earned money back home. Remittances are not only a benefit for those who send and receive money, but also an immensely valuable benefit for our nation. You gotta remember in some countries, uh, their GDP relies on remittance services. And uh, this is why XRP and RippleNet technology is going to be so important and has been in some cases so important for global economies today and moving forward. In acknowledging these factors, we understood that it is important to offer as many privileges as we can for those who use official channels for their remittances. So more details on that. Just down here though, HNB remittance services offer customers convenience and security to transfer funds through the bank's worldwide network of partners in every populated continent. Notably, HNB recorded a significant 15% year-on-year increase in digital remittances in the first half of 2020 alone, following the introduction of cardless withdrawals for Lankin expatriates and the launch of the HNB RippleNet blockchain facility for enterprises, which helped ease the difficulties faced by customers. By the end of its financial year, HNB had facilitated inward remittances in excess of 203 billion LKR inward remittances. So guys, with the help of the RippleNet blockchain, the country of Sri Lanka, was able to thrive, remittances being sent inward, the people of the country benefited, and the country itself also benefited from these remittances. So something to make note of, of course, RippleNet at the heart of this. Wanted to thank T-Hole Bedek for mentioning that. And with the crypto dip that we've recently seen for uh, XRP, for Bitcoin, of course, Bitcoin has since rebounded at the time of this recording. We're seeing it trade right now at about $57,000. I talked a little bit about the technical analysis in this morning's video, but I think it's important to note if El Salvador were a private trader, his portfolio would have been up by $2.1 million even after the 15% retrace from its peak. So El Salvador, we know the story there, using Bitcoin as legal tender and buying the dip along the way. El Salvador's decision to buy Bitcoin while it is going down is a simple buy the dip strategy that is being widely used by both beginner and experienced traders. Here are the results of such a strategy that are being realized by a whole country in Central America. The most recent market activity in the country was the Black Friday sale that the cryptocurrency market experienced amid the announcement of a new pandemic measure in most countries in Europe. Uh, due to the rapid increase of risks on the market, most traders have exited markets and held fiat currencies. Additionally, the oil price drop initiated a global correction on markets, which was then reflected in the crypto market. Bitcoin and other major currencies lost approximately 15% in total, which ultimately is not uh, a huge deal. We did see that slide down for Bitcoin. However, we are seeing now a normal rebound back up for Bitcoin. And this is just outlining that Nayib Bukele bought the dip 150 new coins as per this tweet. And that means that the country's portfolio is up $2.1 million even after the 15% retrace from the peak. And you can imagine all those global elites, the IMF, all those guys not too happy that Nayib Bukele and the country of El Salvador is actually prospering from this Bitcoin trading strategy. I mean, it is very controversial. We still have yet to see the final outcome. However, it sounds like they are quite successful. On November 26th, El Salvador's president, Nayib Bukele, stated that the country bought an additional 100 Bitcoin, uh, which is now already worth 6.8% more compared to the lowest point three days ago. So um, he's treating the country like a big portfolio. And central bankers are not taking too kindly to it, guys. Another one from Michael. Uh, El Salvador's president responds to the Bank of England's Bitcoin adoption criticism. So the Bank of England has criticized El Salvador. Here's what they said. The Bank of England is not a fan of Bitcoin, nor its growing adoption in countries like El Salvador. The governor, Andrew Bailey, has repeatedly expressed his concerns. But this time, El Salvador's president, Nayib Bukele, issued a response. Bank of England concern about El Salvador and Bitcoin. So it gives us a little bit of information here. Uh, and here's what Andrew Bailey said. It concerns me that a country would choose it as a national currency. 
What would worry me the most of all is do the citizens of El Salvador understand the nature and volatility of the currency they have? This was one of the points that I mentioned as well. You know, on a good day, sure, you can invest in Bitcoin and make some good money. However, we have seen, and this has happened time and time again, Bitcoin does indeed finally find a top and then retrace sometimes up to 90%. In the case of the 2018 bear market, we saw Bitcoin retrace. Let's give me that price range tool here. We saw Bitcoin retrace 84% before it continued making its way up. So, uh, you know, this was one of those points that I mentioned. Uh, do the people know that if they do invest in Bitcoin at the top, that they could lose 84% of their portfolio? And so how will the El Salvador economy react to that? But of course, when times are good, times are good, and you can make a lot of money buying down low. But how many people are sophisticated enough to realize this? So this is what Andrew Bailey is saying from uh, the Bank of England. But Naib Bukele lashed back. While addressing Bailey's most recent comments, President Bukele responded in a somewhat ironic fashion, especially about the genuine concerns, <laughs> in quotes, that the Bank of England has for the people of El Salvador. He said, the Bank of England is worried about El Salvador's adoption of Bitcoin. Really? I guess the Bank of England's interest in the well-being of our people is genuine, right? I mean, they have always cared about our people. Always. Gotta love the Bank of England. Clearly very tongue-in-cheek, being very facetious about England's stance, and uh, this goes back politically, socially, in that kind of context. So he's basically saying, F you, buddy. We're doing what we want. We do not care what you think. I love how this is going, and I am curious to see what happens next. Uh, meanwhile, we have another one, guys, from Michael at Val5 Links. A study shows that 58% of multinational firms are now using cryptocurrency. So there was a report, cryptocurrency, blockchain, and cross-border payments, and it was done in collaboration between Circle and Payments, and they surveyed 250 executives. They revealed that cryptocurrency and blockchain technologies are proving increasingly useful for cross-border businesses. Now remember, this was done in conjunction with Circle, so a Ripple competitor. The firms surveyed that they have at least $10 million in annual sales. Uh, at a high level, cryptos can make cross-border payments a bit more streamlined, more transparent, and cost effective. As many as 58% of the firms use at least one crypto. Bitcoin is the most widely used crypto at 31% of those respondents with sales between 250 million and $1 billion, followed by stable coins at 29%. Roughly 55% of companies use blockchain. So uh, you guys can see just uh, some information here. Cryptocurrency usage amongst cross-border businesses. You can see here XRP being utilized at the low end, 2.1%. Now, Again, this is taking into consideration a certain select few companies and uh, probably a lot of them are concentrated in one part of the world. I don't know if this is necessarily a very great accurate representation globally. Nevertheless, XRP did make it on the list 2.1% at the low end with uh, companies with revenue between 100 million and $249 million. You can see Bitcoin, obviously a very popular option, uh, stable coins in and around there, Bitcoin Cash, uh, somewhere in the middle. Uh, and then we have alternative coins, so there is progress that is occurring. Momentum in the cryptocurrency space, I mean, um, at this point in time, it doesn't matter. I do not care necessarily to see XRP in the last spot or in the middle or at the first spot because we know that this is still so new. We know that this is a nascent industry and once we get clarity, we are going to see way more XRP adoption, especially in the United States. But crypto adoption as a whole, I think the education, right? What Brad Garlinghouse and company were trying to get companies to understand back in 2017 and 2018. Crypto adoption, understanding that cryptocurrency is going to be useful. We are seeing improvements there. More financial institutions and banks are jumping on board, so it's only going to be a matter of time. This is good though, all boats will rise with more crypto adoption. And to that point here, guys, an opt-ed about how Algorand is gearing up to be an Ethereum contender. Not gonna go over this entire article, but uh, I know a lot of you guys into Algorand. Of course, a lot of development on that blockchain, a very bright future outlook for the Algorand project. Algorand's reputation among developers is undoubtedly a result of its association with McKelly and his substantial work in the cryptocurrency field. In this respect, McKelly's achievements and input shouldn't be taken lightly when comparing Algorand's prowess against that of other blockchain networks. Uh, so it, it talks in depth about what they are doing, how many people are investing in what, 
They are investing in. This isn't the first time the Algorand Foundation has reinvested into the ecosystem. So also taking money, putting it into the ecosystem. Algorand has gained a competitive edge over Ethereum by actively investing in talent to build Algorand native products and expand their ecosystem as rapidly as possible. So uh, down here, just give some more uh, examples of that. Uh, Algorand's rise to popularity has been further accelerated by its partnerships with prominent organizations around the world. CERN, for instance, is building the world's first immutable air quality ledger in partnership with Algorand. Working in tandem with Planet Watch, CERN's very own blockchain company, Algorand will empower climate change experts with the means to securely store crowdsourced data on air quality to combat pollution. Uh, they're also working with the International Blockchain Monetary Reserve on a macroeconomic project called Asia Reserve Currency Coin or ARCC. The goal of the project is to promote financial inclusion in Southeast Asia and combat corruption by incentivizing the public to report issues. Algorand shows no sign of slowing down when it comes to forming meaningful partnerships with like-minded organizations. So there you go, guys. Uh, I will leave this in the description if you want to read in more detail. I know I did just skim through it. There is a lot of great news coming out of the Algorand camp. Algorand is also one of those WEF coins that uh, the World Economic Forum has definitely made note of. So that is also something to think about if you are looking to invest in coins with a future. And here's another one from Michael. Something else to think about if they can use their cryptocurrencies here without having to exchange them or be faced with government taxes, then it could create convenience for them. Remember the other day when I was talking about Thailand and how they uh, wanted to make uh, Thailand a crypto positive society? Well, they plan to do this. The governor says crypto is the future. Thailand is laying the groundwork to become a crypto positive society with the aim to attract crypto holders and boost its tourism. The country hopes to gain back some of the $80 billion it lost in tourism revenue due to the beer flu pandemic. The tourism authority is working with the country's regulators to make it easier and more convenient for visitors to spend cryptocurrencies in the country. So think about it. Just to this point here, if the vendors in Thailand decided and the businesses all decided we are going to start taking cryptocurrencies, you do not even have to exchange them. That means people like you and I could go visit and we could use our Exodus wallet or something similar where we'd hold our Bitcoin, our Cardano, our Ethereum, our XRP, what have you, and we could pay directly without a middleman using our cryptocurrencies. If they can use their currencies here without having to exchange it or be faced with government taxes, then it would create convenience for them. He explained that the Thai Tourism Authority is laying the groundwork for the wider acceptance of cryptocurrencies, which it plans to have in place by the time global travel returns to normal. The plan is already being discussed with Thai Security and Exchange Commission, their SEC, and the Bank of Thailand, and BitCub Online Company, the largest crypto exchange in the country. So. This, I think, could be great for, um, you know, countries that have uh, seen that loss, right, during the pandemic, that rely heavily on tourism. Bring the tourists back. Let them use their cryptocurrencies. This, of course, is not going to make the globalists very happy, right? They do not want us to travel to begin with. We know the IMF has already been down on countries like El Salvador for using Bitcoin as legal tender. So could you imagine if these tourism-centric uh, countries, right, the island nations, countries like Thailand, Thailand, for example, now decide, well, hey, come on in. Don't use our CBDCs or the US dollar. Come in and use your cryptocurrency to pay for everything. This is where the world could go, guys. I think in a bright future, one where we thwart the globalists, this could see some positive returns for tourism industries all around the world. So uh, an interesting idea. I do wonder though, if it is going to pass, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of red tape and a lot of pressure and pushback on this. Uh, nevertheless, I thought I'd bring it to you guys uh, since I did uh, recently speak about the Thailand story. Down here, one last quote from the TAT governor. Uh, he opined crypto is the future, so we must make Thailand a crypto positive society to welcome this group of quality tourists. Great idea. I got to say this would be a great idea. And finally, guys, wanted to bring this to your attention from Stefan Hubert. You're going to call me crazy. The only two times where the market cap, yes, the XRP market cap did not fully correlate with the price of XRP was in this year, 2021. And that were the exact days after the SEC filed for an extension. It never happened before, and it never happened after. So some interesting observations here. October 15th, 2021, letter motion for extension of time to complete discovery. This is obviously that extension that was made back last month. 
and take a look at the price, take a look at the market cap. You can see that discrepancy in there. There was also one more time here, May 10th, 2021, letter motion for extension of time to file response reply addressed to Magistrate Judge Sarah Netburn. And uh, you can see here, these are, uh, these are reversed order, but if you guys take a look here, May 10th, you can see that market cap also not correlating to XRP price. So it begs the question, is something up? He posted this just three hours ago, uh, retweeting this out just to kind of punctuate his point here. Want to see something really weird? Market cap always correlates one-to-one -one with token prices. If price goes up, market cap goes up in the same proportion. If price goes down, the market cap also goes down in the same proportion. But now we are seeing these discrepancies, guys, with extensions. Letter motion for extension on October 15th and back on May 10th, 2021. Is something happening? Is it just coincidentally a glitch? on the XRP chart? Or are there movers and shakers behind the scene doing something that we are just not privy to? And what does it even actually mean? All questions that have got me scratching my head as well. Thanks so much, Stefan. We do not think you're crazy. That's just my opinion, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.